The scene started where a huge demon was attacking, as we got to know that during the battle between the demon lord and the human race, the lives of thousands of innocents were taken against their will, and the whole world was wrapped into a deep darkness. Until that moment, the hero, wielding in his right hand the holy sword twirling named Alexandrite, defeated that demon lord and brought freedom, leaving back to their world. As the scene shifted, our protagonist's father was telling him the story, saying that then they lived happily ever after. He asked if the sword really exists, as his dad wasn't confirmed about it. Our protagonist was amazed to hear the name of the holy sword, the twirling, and decided that someday he would wield it and go for adventures. As the scene shifted five years later, our protagonist had reached the capital. It's the place where skills are granted by God, and he was very excited. In that world, when someone turns 15, they get the chance to receive some sort of power granted by gods. The maximum amount of skills a person can receive is three, and they are completely random. The guy from, as he noticed a guy who just before him seemed like he didn't get good skills. It was considered taboo to investigate the abilities that other people have. Nevertheless, there are also a lot of people who make their own skills public, as the people who use their skills for work are used to announce them on a billboard. And even now, their king is also a user of skills. Within 100 blade skills, the king has the second most powerful of them, and he also had a second one which was physical enhancement. They say that by combining those two skills, he obtained the strongest power ever seen. As he said, right now he can hardly hunt a little bunny, but depending on these skills that he will receive today, his life will entirely change. As he reaches the capital, the guard asks if he's the one who came to obtain skills. He confirmed it to the guard, and the guard asked for his name and his age. He replied that his name is mine and he has turned 15 years old. Then the guard asked him to enter the circle. As mine followed him, the guard asked him to place his hand over the sphere and start praying to the god with gratitude just for him becoming an adult. As he thinks about it, five years ago his parents died from the epidemic, and despite that, he was able to become an adult. He considered that it was all thanks to the village that took care of him, and then he put his hand on the sphere, being so thankful. But just then, he felt a sudden change in the environment. It's over, the guard congratulated him for receiving his skills with no problem. He said it's the cut and paste skill and the judgment full and said that it's incredible. Mine wonders that he remembered seeing the cut skills commonly used by the hunters of the village, as it helps them to cut the meat of dead animals or to cut jewels from minerals which are known as a destruction skill. On the other hand, paste was used by the village repairers to fix broken tools. They taught them that it doesn't matter what it is, the skill will paste it all back together. Both cut and paste skills are common, but there are just a few cases of people who gain both as one only skills and also judgment full. This is the first time they saw that skill. The judgment skills is their existing name, gender, and a lot of others which help them to analyze many different things but also known as the eye of God it's the greatest rank ability from judgment skills which lets them know everything. And also, the skills received from God cannot be either raised or multiplied, but the amount of combinations that one can make with them is up to the individual, as skills can be considered as life itself as they will be praying for them to have a wonderful life. Mine thanked them as the scene shifted where Mine was in the town as he wondered that it would take half a day until he arrived in Lucas City. Just then, someone called him, confirming if it was Mine and said, what a coincidence that they thought he was in there in the capital too. As Mine saw that it was Edgar, they talked a bit. Edgar confirmed that it's true, he is already an adult. Then Mine asked if today was Edgar's day of gatekeeping. Edgar denied, saying the truth, as right now there is some trouble at Lucas City. He told him recently a bunch of orcs have been around Lucas Forest. Edgar came there to inform the guild. Mine told him it's the same forest he went to every morning to hunt, as orcs are dangerous monsters which kill people and animals, and someone like Mine wouldn't even stand a chance before getting Edgar said all the orcs habitat and Lucas City are pretty far away from each other, and he thinks that could be a misunderstanding. He told Mine to be careful in case he goes to the forest. As Mine said, he had nothing to do and decided to sleep. Just then, he gets an idea that he can give his new skills a try. He thinks about the judgment full, which is supposed to let him know it all, but even if he tried to imagine, he wonders what all means and so decided to use judgment on Edgar. As he casts the spell, he gets all the information about Edgar. He was stunned to see that, seeing Edgar's unique information. He can really see his skills, as he noticed that Edgar has some awesome skills and considers if he is a gatekeeper, then he can live with no worries. Mine wonders if he can see other people's stats. He knew that investigating other people's skills is taboo, but it will just be for a moment. 
as he was able to look at others' stats and was amazed as he can see the information of strangers, and he understood the spell judgment as he can to see his own stats. Just then, he looked at a person, and he saw the stats and realized that the guy was a thief. He was nervous thinking why a thief would be there, as he noticed that Edgar is completely asleep. And the other guy, there are just normal adventurers, and it seems to him that he is for himself this time. As it was almost time for them to enter the Rocky Mountains, which was the best education to do that kind of stuff, and if possible, he would like to do something about it. As the judgment full scale is in the damage dealer skill, and his cut scale is used for cutting dead animals and taking jewels from minerals, it won't have any effect if he tries using it on a living being. Just then, he gets an idea. He then looked at the shoes of the thief and pasted it. As then he looked at the blade and then he casted his paste magic on the shoes to the floor and the blade to the scabbard, yet he can't say if they are safe that way. And also, there's no chance that he can tell the others about that situation and wonder if that's all he can do. As he remembered that skills can be considered as life itself, and the limitation of combination is up to the individual. And then he decided to concentrate and then use the cut skill. And that's how he realized that he can take away skills from others inside of him as he passed it. As the maximum amount of skills a person can receive is three, and the skill he obtained cannot be either erased or multiplied. Even so, now mine has a skill inside him. He was nervous thinking if that's okay, as even it goes against the god's justice, even if he just stole somebody's skills. Just then they heard the sound as they saw men on horses rushing towards them, as they were thieves. Just then the thief in the carriage stood up and called them fools and asked them to take out everything if they didn't want to die as he was about to take out his sword, but he was stunned to see that he was unable to as the adventurers were awake and asked what's going on. As the thief fell down as his shoes were pasted, as he wondered what had happened. As the adventure gets him, Mine saw that there are still eight thieves and then he tried to cast the judgment skill. As just then an arrow came in front as Edgar was able to save Mine as it was as close as maybe was still able to manage to judge all of them and decided that he needs to start cutting skills from the ones who seem more dangerous. As the lady with her arrows said it doesn't matter wherever they hide, her eyesight enhancement will let her see through everything. But just then, she lost her eyesight and panicked, asking what had happened. The thief was getting mad at them, and the other thief said that he would cast his wind magic and cut the carriage. Just the moment he casted his spell, he was all stunned that he couldn't cast any magic. It was mine who had stolen their skills. Edgar changed, saying that it's their chance now. The adventurers asked mine to be in the carriage and keep an eye on that thief and asked him not to come out. The thief was poised, asking why it ended up like that or if their lives were done there. Then the scene shifted to Lucas City, where the guild member praised Edgar, saying it was a relief that he was in the carriage, and said that they will give him some recompense. Edgar came back to mine and asked if he's okay. Mine asked what's going to happen to those guys. Edgar said that they will be sold at the black market as crime slaves, and with that money, the recompense he will be paid. Mine asked about being a slave, and Edgar said that's the life which they chose, as they got what they deserve. Mine was affected, wondering if that was considered as life itself. He remembered the words of that thief as Edgar called him out. Mine apologized, saying that he's tired and will go home. Then the scene shifted as Mine had returned home. He went there and called out for his mom and dad. They were no more, he just informed them saying that he had obtained some amazing skills and that's how he used his skills and wondered if his father would know, as he was tired and lay down wondering what he should do. Then the scene shifted to the next morning where it was cold. Mine didn't have work, so he decided to just go hunting and try out his skills. Then he noticed a forest rabbit. They always ran away immediately as he tried to get close and decided that he would use the dagger extreme skill, which he obtained from the thieves yesterday, and then leg enhancement. He rushed towards the rabbit as the rabbit looked at him. Before it could react to mine, he swiftly hunted down the rabbit. He realized that he can easily do that as he casted the cut spell and skinned the fur perfectly. He said that to use the skills that were being used for bad purposes and instead of that using them for good things and realized that it should be easy that way. Just then, Mine heard a big thud as he saw that it was an orc and realized that they really are in the forest. As he realized that the ones who can beat orcs are adventurers above sea rank, and a hunter apprentice like him has no chance to win. But just then he realized about his powers and wondered if he could use his judgment ability. As he read the ability of the orcs and realized that it's a special technique which modified the constitution of monsters and so they are exclusive skills just for monsters. As then Mine cuts down both the skills and pastes it inside him. But it was no use as he realized that humans can't possess ability but as long as he gave the stout arms. That arc is now supposed to be skillful and now he was confident that it should be able to do it. As then he used the leg enhancement and rushed towards the orc. As he got closer, 
He got scared seeing him that big but then he used the wind magic and wondered if he could cut off his face. But right now he can't stop that as then he slashed his face off and like that the giant orc fell down the ground his mind was amazed to see that he did it and wondered if he'd still be alive. As then he decided to use the cut magic and if he is still alive it didn't affect as then he used the magic and then he made good slashes of meat as he was amazed that he can do it as kind as he considered when he has judgment full and cut and paste he can do it too. As the scene shifted to where the guard came and informed that he had a report. The person asked what it would be as he stated that it's unusual for him to come there just to inform him of something. As the guard said that he got some incredible skills as the person asked what kind of. As he informed him about the judgment full as the person realized that it's the eyes of God and finds that interesting. As the scene shifted where mine went to the market and a shopkeeper said to mine that it must be a joke and asked if he's telling him that a kid who can barely hunt a rabbit is bringing the orc meat and said that's incredible. As mine asked if he could buy that as he revoked that originally the one kilogram is sold for one silver coin but mentioned that today is a special occasion and they are celebrating kiddo's birthday so asked him to take it as a present. This time he will buy that for one gold and 23 silver coins as mine was stunned to hear that and asked if he is okay with that much. And then he left saying that he will bring more meat. As the scene shifted at the alchemist's shop as mine entered the person saw him and asked what brought him there. As mine replied that he hunted an orc and came there to sell the raw materials as he was stunned to hear and couldn't believe that as mine put down the eyes of an orc on his table. The alchemist came in running and asked if those were an orc's eyes as he was stunned to confirm that those are the orc's spirit rock and that could only be taken from the inside of the heart, and therefore it's valuable. As then he looked at the orc's testicles and was amazed to see a perfect cut. The alchemist proposed to seek those for one gold and thirty-two silver coins. The alchemist told him that orc bones can also be sold at a high price and asked, where are the bones? Mine replied that it was too much for his fifty kilograms bag and so he had to leave them behind as there was also a lot of meat. Hearing of mine, he asked him to give him a second as then he called up Sonine and asked her to get that bag for him. She replied and then she came there with a bag and asked if he would be okay with that one. As the alchemist said to mine if he is okay with that he will give him that 10 tea bag. Mine was amazed to hear him but the alchemist said that he would like to take a request of his and told him that he wants him to defeat three more orcs and mentioned that there's no time limit. The girl was stunned and asked what he was even asking for and asked if he was trying to kill mine. She mentioned orcs are savage monster that kill men and violate women and mentioned that they will do something horrible to mine. As the alchemist asked her to calm down, the alchemist said that he was amazed and said that mine must have obtained some amazing skills. As he gave him the bag, mine asked if that's really okay for him to accept that bag. As the alchemist said that the trust is orcs raw materials are sold to the nobles as luxury items, and they have a great demand so they could be also traded at high cost and even so if his request at the adventurous guild to defeat orc it turns out into a deficit. Mine confirmed that he gets that and said that he even received that bag and he'll hunt those three orcs with pleasure. As the alchemist asked him to be careful and not to overestimate himself as even if he is feeling stronger he just has one life. Mine agreed saying that he will keep that in mind as then the alchemist asked him to take it as mine saw a potion as the alchemist said that he is giving that too and so asked him to take that with him. As then mine gets into the forest as he said even though they told him not to overdo that but he has no choice but to do it as a thanks for the bag. As he went there, where he had left the bones around that area, just then he noticed a forest sheep. They are fast, and he decided that he has to give up on them. As he remembered that the villagers hunt them for their fur as he used the full judgment on the sheep as he saw that the monster got the magic sleep and alchemy as mine realized that he will get troublesome if he fell asleep and decided to take them. As then he about to get out but noticed that his hands are stick to the tree as mine was struggling to get him off and wonder what's that as the sheep saw him as then mine used the cut spell to get rid of that. As mine noticed that the sticky things were the crawler threads as they were eating the orc bones, he was pissed to see that. As then mine jumped to and cut down the crawler thread deciding to get them back as just then a crawler attacked mine as suddenly his entire body was feeling heavy. As the crawler was about to attack mine, he barely dodged that as he wondered what was that as he casted the judgment skills. As he noticed that they have the speed lowering magic which mine must be facing. As he then cuts that spell, there's a big thud as he sees that it was the orcs as mine was screwed as they entered right at the worst moment. He was stunned to see that there were three of them as he saw their status and said that they are just merely strong orcs. As mine decided that he needs to stop them and then prepare himself as he used the speed lowering spell. He was relieved to see that it was working but he wondered what he should do as his ribs are broken and have no energy left to fight those three as he got one knocked out by using the sleep spell. 
as there still two remains. Then mine was done with preparations as he then used the multiple spell like the eyesight enchanted then used his dagger in extreme and then used the speed boost and decided to use his whole power. And at the end he uses his plan and cuts down the head of the orc and then slashed the face of the second orc and then the next the sleeping one as he was able to defeat all the orcs. As mine felt a sharp pain and realized that his bones are at his limits. As he remembered that he had the potions from the alchemist asked then he drinks that as the pain is gone and realized that from now it'll be as necessary as he realized that just before he took the alchemy from the sheep he looked at his stats and realized that he have a lot of skills as he wonder if he walk around carelessly using all those skills then someone will end up finding out as he didn't know about that skill and he didn't want to steal people's lives anymore. As the scene shifted at the Augusta capital, as mine entered the capital, it was his second time there. He said there were all kinds of people and places. When he first came there was when he was 15 to be blessed with some skills and acquired from God's hand. And as the skills he got are judgment full and the cut and paste and both of them are supposed to be useful in daily life skills, but by mixing them he gets an unbelievable result. He wondered if somebody found out then he can't know what his situation will turn into and so that's why then he entered the Adventurer's Guild as for becoming an adventurer and living by himself he ended up coming to the Adventurer's Guild. As he looks around and wonders if all of those are adventurers as they look strong and notices that one of them was in the carriage with him and wonder if it's possible he doesn't want to get involved with anybody. He realized that he should be there as he went to the reception and introduced himself to the lady and said that he wanted to register himself as an adventurer. Just then the other adventurer looked at him as mine was trying to talk to that girl Asia. As they considered that they didn't have the chance to talk as then an adventurer said isn't that kid is aiming for Asia as he replied as if she would even look at him. As mine gets nervous and says that it seems that he headed to the wrong place. But Asia called him and asked him to stop saying that there was no rule for that as mine looked at her and said even if she said that it looks in her face that she's kind of troubling. Aisha asked about it and then told him that most of the guild members have some rude mouth and manners and so said that he might take his guard off in a while, and told him therefore not to be worried and asked him to sit. As he was about to sit down, an adventurer stopped him and asked why is a kid like him becoming an adventurer. As Aisha called him Hyoldo and tried to stop him saying disputes are not allowed as he replied that he is spitting facts as Hyoldo told him that he would meet thousands years early if he thinks he can use Aisha's counter as mine said what he had told. That kind of rules don't exist. As Hyoldo gets mad as mine was answering him back. Just then a person came there and told Hyoldo to stop as everyone saw that person and then Hyoldo throws mine down and said that he is too weak as mine looked at him with anger as Hyoldo gets mad and about to punch him saying that he is gonna teach him a lesson as mine wonder that he has to take it as just then Aisha came there to save him as mine saw her and realized if Aisha gonna be like that it will be dangerous. As then he used the stout arms as that was the only thing he wouldn't let happen and then mine was punched by Hyoldo hard. The person above realized that mine received the whole impact to protect Aisha as everyone was praising for Hyoldo as he gave mine a nice teaching as Aisha was worried as Hyoldo said that he hoped that mine had learned something about that as then the person gets downs and asked what's all the mess. As Hyoldo gets mad asking who dares to call him like that as he turned around and was stunned to see that it's the guild master. As the guild master asked Hyoldo what's all the fuss about, Hyoldo was fumbling and said it's because he was a newcomer and was trying to challenge him and so he just taught him a lesson. As Aisha gets mad and about to tell him the truth as mine did nothing, as the guild master stopped her saying that she can tell her side of the story later, and said that there are so many people watching and so he will ask them all, and asked if what Hyoldo said is true or not, and asked them to answer him as the adventurer told him that he was a normal citizen with no resistance and Hyoldo started beating him one-sidedly, as Hyoldo was mad hearing that and cursed Keith. As then the guild master asked what happened to the guild members who hurt the normal citizens. As Aisha informed him that the guild is an organization recognized by the country, and takes requests from the country to make profits, and mentioned if a member of the guild causes harm to the normal citizen, then as a penalty they will be fined with 10 platinum coins and be permanently banned from the guild as the guild master said that he understood and asked her to leave the rest on him. As Hyoldo gets mad and said that he didn't want either of them and takes his weapon and about to attack the guild master as the guild master called him an idiot and pulls out his sword as Hyoldo attacked him saying he did nothing wrong as everyone called hold an idiot as he really attacked the guild master and as the smoke disappeared it's Hyoldo's hand which was slashed down by the guild master. Hyoldo was stunned to see that as the guild master said whoever fired up Hyaldu in doing that thing he had to come there and bother him with those trivial things again. 
As the guild master realized even though Hyoldo looked like a stupid orc he still has the power of a D-rank adventurer and realizes to take that man's punch directly to save someone else and consider that mine seems like he too received the same beautiful soul as their parents. As the scene shifted where mine woke up as he stood up and asked about the place he is in as Aisha said she was really worried as mine asked if Aisha is okay and asked if she's injured. Just then Mine felt a sharp pain as Aisha told him that he should stay still. As the wound is not closed yet as the guild master came there telling him that he almost died as his body got crushed by Hyoldo's fists, and said because of Aisha's recovery magic he was safe this time, and mentioned if he became an adventurer he will probably die outside as well and after knowing that he asked did he still want to become an adventurer. As Mine replied that he could lie to them about not being afraid but said after his parents died he was able to survive and because of the help from everyone in the village and if possible he wanted to help the villagers with his skills and said that he didn't mind to become people's hope that type of adventurer he wants to become and said that he wants to become a good and great adventurer. Alicia was impressed by his words and apologized to the guild master saying that she will accept mine. As then the guild master gave him his card saying that it's the guild card and he can use it as an identification card and it can be used in other countries as all his personal data and the money of the quest reward are all entered in it and so ask him not to lose that. As Mine noticed Aisha's name on the card as his exclusive receptionist as Mine asked about it the guild master said due to the case of Hyoldo. As an apology to Mine the guild has decided to put an exclusive receptionist for him and informed him that from today onwards Aisha will be his exclusive receptionist as Mine asked what's exclusive as the guild master said that she will give him the girl's service when he wants them and whenever he wants she will be there to support him and she will be there for whenever he wants her and to put it simply he said it's like him and her are in relationship. As the guild master informed him that Aisha is the guild's most popular receptionist and told him not to let jealous people read him apart when he is asleep as Aisha asked Mine to get along with her as Mine was nervous as he wanted to go alone that why he came to the guild and now he didn't know what to do. As the scene shifted where Mine was with Keith, he said that now Mine had officially registered as an F-rank adventurer. Mine thanked him, then Mine asked Aisha how he could increase his rank. She replied that he needs to complete some guild requests and earn the guild point to increase his rank. She mentioned that she has picked up some requests that can be handled by F-rank adventurers and asked him to try one of those requests. Aisha told him as he moves up ranks, he will get more money and the same, and he can also make his parents happy. Mine looked at the request and said that his parents are no longer there but said that he still works hard to upgrade his rank so that he can repay his debt to the people in the village. After hearing that, Aisha apologized to him. Mine asked her not to worry about it. Then he said right now all the people in the village are helping him so it's very fun living with everyone. Aisha holds his hand, saying that she will also support Mine from now on and will do her best together. Mine agreed to her. Aisha said it's a bit too soon but she had picked up three of the best quests for Mine and mentioned that the slime subjugation is the main one. She told him last month the town of Lunavan was attacked by bandits due to the fire set up by the bandits. All the slime oil which had been stored in the storehouse got burnt to the ground. As slime oil can be used as fuel in households, so people in Lunavan are living in the dark right now. Mine was worried and asked if the people in the town were alright. Aisha smiled, saying everyone in the guild volunteered to help and there were no deaths. And that's why she said that the reward for the slime subjugation is small but the delivery for the oil delivery is very high. Mine asked her to let her do the request for the people of Lunavan. Mine saw that the other two are the goblin subjugation and the delivery herbs. Alicia asked Mine if he knew where slime lives. He confirmed, saying that they live near the fountain of lime in the north of Lucas, and the liquor made from the fruits on the trees the river is specially of their village. He said that the lime fruits that grow there are goblins' favorite fruit. Aisha mentioned that the goblins are going to appear at the same time, and there are also some good quality medicinal herbs that grow at the base of the lime trees. Mine realized that they can accomplish all requests in one place. As Mine asked them to let him take all those three quests, a lady commented, Is Mine really a good kid? Aisha agreed to her but she wondered that to such a kid she made a terrible mistake. As the scene shifted in the guild where an adventurer came and rudely asked if Aisha really gets assigned as that brat's exclusive receptionist. The lady said that it's mine as he got mad and stomped his hand on the table and said that he is almost about to reach B rank and here's an F Frank brat who is weaker than Hyoldo and asked what's so great about him. He said that he worked hard and became strong just to have Aisha as his exclusive receptionist. Aisha called him Lyle and blushed, saying that she felt something in mine which she didn't see in others. He got mad and kicked the table as Aisha screamed, asking what he was doing. Lyle said that he has wasted his life for that and he will never be convinced. 
He was full of anger and determined that he would finish mine as the scene shifted where mine was starting as the person asked what happened and asked if he found something. He called that person OG and asked if there was anything special about that dagger. He wondered what that number after the name plus 12 meant. OG replied that he didn't know about its looks but the dagger has a blacksmith's light. Mine was confused as OG told him when the blacksmith completed a weapon or arm. The armor or weapon may shine sometimes as weapons which are created with that light have high performance and mentioned that the light on the dagger is especially strong. Mine said that he will buy that as OG asked, isn't that weapon too for rabbit hunting and asked if he also changed his armor to black wolf leather armor. Mine said that he is going to subjugate slimes and goblins. OG asked isn't that too early for Mine as he assured him saying that it's okay as he has already once defeated four orcs. OG was stunned to hear and couldn't believe his eyes. As Mine left, OG took a smoke in saying that the girl Neen if the alchemy shop told was true and just after having his coming of ceremony Mine already defeated four orcs and considered that blood can't be contested. As the scene shifted where Mine entered the forest as he said that it's been a long time since he has been to the lime fountain as he reminded how he used to enjoy with his parents as then he moved inside as he gets there and saw a bright light. It's the lime fountain and the reflected sunlight is shining golden. As there were limestone trees everywhere around that fountain and just as Aisha said there are high quality herbs growing there and decided to pick some for himself too as he decided to try making potions with the well water. And herbs in his home as just then a monster looked at mine as mine suspected that and looked above and realized that something was there as he used enhanced eyesight and realized that he is surrounded by slimes and goblins as he was stunned and wondered when they got so close to him as just then the slimes attacked mine as mine somehow started to cut down the slimes as he realized that it's goblins ordering the slimes. As the goblins attacked mine as he was able to barely dodge that as they were fast and wondered did the goblins disappear for a moment there. Just then the goblins jumped on him as mine wasn't able to dodge that and got hit by the goblins as he was stunned and realized that it does hurt but those goblins are incredibly weak. As he was about to get me again, he got deceived by their speed and decided to see the secret behind that speed. As mine casted the judgment full and saw that they got the magic, the presence erase, and the small recovery as he then cut off the spell and then decided to use that now. After that, the presence of mine disappeared as the goblins were confused. Mine looked around and as he was sure that the goblins were ordering the slimes, he decided to look at the stats of that goblin and was stunned to see that the ability he got is absolutely dangerous. The goblin got the 10x experience acquisition and decided to firstly stake that as mine cut off the skill and noticed that the slimes were leaving. Then mine casted the tame spell and now slimes are his allies. Now in terms of numbers, mine got the advantage and then he ordered the slime to attack the goblins and then decided to steal all the useful skills from the goblins. The goblins were all defeated as mine was amazed to find out that he can control the monsters. He thanked them as mine wondered that he needs slime oil but he can't just kill the slimes he has fought with. Just then the slimes turned into vibes as he was amazed to see that as he looked at the stats and realized that it's the slime oil and suspected if it's because they are tame and he wanted the slime oil. As mine apologized to them as it's gotten so dark and wonder if Aisha is still in the guild and decided that he needs to get that slime oil in the town of Luna when as soon as possible as he enters the guild there was Lyle and called out mine saying that he has something to talk to him and asked him to come with them. As mine was confused where they were taking him and asked what kind of business they were doing in such an alley. Lyle asked him not to worry as it will be over soon and said that he's just going to kill him. Mine was stunned to hear that as just then the other adventurer of the party complained that it's different from what Lyle had told them. They were supposed to scare the kid until he quits the guild. Lyle replied that if they keep Mine alone then Aisha will know about it but the other person asked him to quit joking and said that the party will also end up taking the fall for whatever he decides to do. He asked if he's going to turn them into killers. Just then Lyle used his power and choked that person and said that he was being too noisy and said that he would end up killing him too. The person got scared and said that he was kidding and they were supposed to be friends. Mine was scared as Lyle seemed tough and wondered what's with that light. The members asked Lyle to stop as Mine noticed that Lyle got the finger bullet and he was pointing his weapon towards his friends. Mine asked Lyle to stop as he'll be his opponent instead. Ammon called him an idiot as he is no match for him and asked him to run away as he is going to get killed. Just then Lyle attacked Ammon and asked him not to get in his way as Ammon got hurt in the shoulder as Lyle warned him saying that he will cut him off. As Lyle was about to hit him again, Mine was able to push him aside as Ammon wonders if that's the wind magic. Mine wondered even though he is unable to hit him directly at least he can try to make him sleep by using the sand and so he uses the wind and blows out the sand around him which can be used as a distraction. 
as then Mayan gets close to Ammon and asks if he's okay and says that he'll use the recovery potion which will help him heal. As just then there was a hold in his palm and the potion was shattered as Lyle asked if he was trying to distract him by that. Lion's hand hurts and he has to use the recovery magic from the goblins. Just then Ammon was hit again by Lyle as he asked Mine to wait as first he will kill him after he's done with Ammon. Mine wondered how Lyle saw that through as he didn't have a skill like that. Lyle said how many bandits or thieves you thought he had to fight against before and the gap in his experience is different. As the other members were leaving saying that they are quitting the party, Lyle called them traitors and decided that he had to kill them as well. Just then Mine gets in front of him and pleads with him to stop and if he doesn't help Ammon then he will die and said he is supposed to be a friend. As Lyle said that it's Mine who had killed Ammon and he ended up killing him for Ammon's sake and said that it'd be a good idea for him to report the guild like that too. Mine starts questioning if the adventurer's job is to save people and wonders why he's trying to take a person's life, and the adventurer whom he always admired is not like that. He wonders that the hero, Ericus and Sorady, wants to be an adventurer who can protect people. As Lyle was ready with his finger bullet and told him to die, Mine was in thoughts that to protect a person's lives if he can protect a person's life then his skills can save lives. And so he will as just then the finger bullet disappeared as Lyle was stunned to see that his Mine had stolen all his skills. Mine told Lyle to give and if he didn't hurt anyone else then he would return his skill as Lyle was mad and asked what he did to him. As Lyle rushed to attack him asking what he did to him. Just then Mine used his sign block as just then Mine vanished as Lyle was confused and asked where he went as Mine went to Ammon and asked if he's okay as Ammon said that he is a lifesaver. As Lyle was in asked how he did that, Mine asked Ammon to run away. Ammon told him that Mine wasn't even skilled adventurers and weren't a match for him. Mine looked at him and asked him to go. Ammon was stunned and left by apologizing and thanked him. Lyle was mad and again tried to use his finger bullet, saying that he wouldn't let him go, but he was mad as it didn't work. Mine asked him to stop and asked him to cherish his life. Lyle turned around and was about to punch him, but Mine disappeared. Lyle gets mad and calls him a coward and asks him to show himself. Lyle said that he won't be able to fool him anymore. Lyle was confused and asked why he can't hit Mine even though he is on the strangest level. Just then Aisha and the guildmaster came there and called out to Mine. Lyle was afraid to see them and realized that his members actually betrayed him. Lyle told Mine that he told him to cherish his life and said that he dedicated his life to Aisha and claimed that he really loved her. He said if he can't of her then no one can, and then he took the dagger and rushed towards Aisha, saying if he can't of her he'll just kill her, and then he was about to hurt Aisha. As Mine casted the spell but realized that the skill won't reach as it was bad, just then Mine closed the gap and swung his dagger. Lyle was confused as then Mine used the fighting extreme skill and hit him with his grand army spell. The punch hit hard in Lyle's gut, and he fell back. The guildmaster noticed that as Aisha came there, saying that his bones shouldn't pop out like that as he was hitting him without wearing a knuckle guard. She said that she'll heal him right away. Aisha looked at him, saying that he's being reckless, as Mine apologized to her and thanked her for her help. The guildmaster said that he'd rest over there to help him but he never expected that he would be able to defeat Lyle. Mine apologized but said that the fighting within the guild resulted in immediate expulsion. The guildmaster said that he heard the whole story from Lyle's members and assured that this time he had done nothing wrong but said that there's one problem as Mine used the leg strength that's able to close the distance in an instance and then aren't strength to defeat Lyle and the technique used to deflect Lyle's sword. He said as a guildmaster he has to explain. As the scene shifted, a lady said that a boy had just become an adult, managed to defeat four orcs by himself, and asked her father if that rumor is true. Her father asked about it. The guard told him that it's the one who received the full judgment in cut and paste skills. The lady said that those skills alone aren't capable of defeating orcs. Her father said a boy who is able to use full judgment and the eyes of God's skill might eventually become a great tactician, greater than they could imagine, and said that he thinks it'll be good for them to meet him immediately. The daughter talked to him about that and asked if he would entrust that matter to her, as the kingdom's first princess Sulfide Augusta. She said as a princess she should confirm if he's worthy or not. Her father allowed her to go and confirm whether he is worthy or not. As the scene shifted, Mary asked the guild master if everything was going to be alright, about the whole mine situation. He replied that it's difficult and asked if she had a problem with the decision he made. Mary replied that she's talking about it to him because clearly, and said that Aisha had been mad about it since. Mary mentioned that he was even able to defeat Lyle, the strongest in the C rank, and he had such a promising future. She showed sympathy towards Aisha that she had just become a receptionist as well, and Mine was capable of defeating orcs as well, and asked how could the guild master expel a boy like him. 
She asked if he's really an idiot. As the scene shifted, the guild master was mad and screamed out, saying that he had already made the decision to expel mine and asked them to deal with it. Princess Silphide was there, disguised, as he went to Aisha and called her and asked if she could tell her more about the boy who got expelled. Aisha apologized, saying that they don't share that info with non-guild members. Aisha recognized her as the Royal Highness Silphide and asked what she was doing there. Silphide greeted her and asked her to allow her to meet the guild master before someone finds out. As the scene shifted, Lyle's punishment had been decided, and he'll be permanently banned from the guild and will be fined four platinum coins. Also, about Mine's skills, Mine apologized to the guild master, saying that he can't tell anything about his skills. He replied that he would be expelled for defying the orders. Aisha speaks up, saying that a skill is a very personal type of information and asked isn't she is asking for too much. He stopped Aisha, saying that a guild master's order to his men is absolute. He said that he didn't usually ask about others' skills, but mine certainly has physical strengthening, dagger skills, leg strengthening, and also hand-to-hand -hand combat skill. Moreover, when mine had the chance to chase Lyle and save Aisha, he used a different skill. He mentioned that the max number of skills he can receive from God is three, and yet asked how many skills mine actually has. Mine still apologizes, saying that he can't tell him anything about it. As the guild master said that then they cannot let people like him be registered there. Mine agreed and said that he understood. Aisha tried to stop him, saying that he doesn't have to obey his order and said he will be left alone. Mine looked at her, smiled, and thanked her, assuring her that he will be fine being alone. He said it hasn't been that long since he joined the guild but thanked her for her help. Sulfied heard the story as the guild master kneeled in front of her. Sulfied said that it's absurd and asked aren't there any guild members who broke more rules than that boy. He agreed with her. Sulfide asked about the large amount of slime oil there. Aisha replied that those were delivered by mine for Luna City, and he collected all those in just one day. The princess was impressed and considered that he is worthy of the whole country's acknowledgement, and if they get those, Luna one will prosper for quite some time. Then the princess asked the guild master Bazam to lift his head, saying that his absurdness had helped her in some ways. She said that since mine is no longer a guild member, that will make things easier for her. Then she asked Aisha if she knows where that boy lives, and she's going to confirm it right now. Basim said that he shall offer her his aid to escort him to Mine's house, but she denied, saying that this time he should keep the guild in order and asked him to try and manage the guild to keep both the country and its people safe. Aisha asked if she may go with her. She would also like to see Mine for one last time as there are a lot of things that she has wanted to apologize for. Sulfide agreed and asked her to go together as she would feel a lot safer if the former B-rank adventurer, the holy bow Aisha, would travel alongside her. The scene shifted to Luca's city where Aisha reached Edgar and greeted him. He was stunned and asked what was with the adventurer outfit. He asked if she quit being the guild receptionist. Aisha told him that she's going to visit Mine's house, and his house is on the outskirts. Edgar confirmed them but said that Mine just entered the forest recently which is a dangerous place. Aisha asked about it. Edgar informed them that some village hunters claimed that they had seen a few orcs there, and Mine had gone alone to investigate it. And before he came there, the other gatekeeper said that it would be fine since it's Mine, so he's thinking of checking up on him. Aisha said that they will go and check on him. Edgar denied, saying that they can't let someone pass through without a country permit. Then the princess revealed her face and asked if he would allow her to pass through. He was stunned to see that it was the princess and said that there was no problem, and he would open the gate for her as they were about to enter the forest. Edgar bowed in front of her and apologized for his behavior and said that there are orcs in the forest. Sulfide said that there's no need as she is not called as the night princess for nothing, and with her, the holy Boatia is there so fighting orcs will not be a problem. Moreover, she said if those orcs ever reach that gate, it's his job to protect it and said that she heard that he is the reason that Lucas had always been at peace. So she said that she will leave that town on Edgar's hand as Edgar was happy to hear that and showed reassurance to the princess. Then Aisha and Sulfide get inside the forest. In the forest, Mine was fighting the orcs by using his multiple skills. He kept on killing the orcs one by one. With that, he had already defeated five of the orcs, but he heard that there are more of them. He realized that there's no other way as he needs to go deeper inside the Lucas forest. As he went in, he saw that there is an orc village there as human bones are scattered everywhere, and wondered since when did they have a village like that. Just then he noticed a girl who was captured by the orcs as they were getting close to her. Mine was nervous seeing that they have caught a human girl, and he had to quickly save her but realized that he had to be against a group of armed high orcs and no matter how many skills he steals he will still lose in strength and questions if he can really do that alone. 
as the orcs were tearing the cloth of the girl, as the orc was about to grab her. Just then mine cast the spell and cut down the hand of that orc. He considered that there was no time to think as he did not have a choice and then he called the monster towards him and said that he would be their opponent. As mine noticed that there were six high orcs and to take their skills, he will use appraisal. Just then, he was stunned to realize that the sense of skills had changed. He noticed that the strange number had increased. Panicked, he wondered what had happened. As the orc attacked him, he barely dodged it and tried to keep himself calm because before anything else, he needed to take their skills. He used his sleep skill and made two of them down, then used his dagger to cut their heads off. He decided to use the strong arm extreme skill, which he just got, and used the martial arts continuously on them. He realized it's the same as before, feeling stronger, and wondered what exactly caused that. He looked at his stats and realized that he also got a number as it seems like it had changed from level 13 to 20. He wondered if he had become stronger because of that. The level of appraisal also went up. Just then, he noticed the girl and realized that he didn't have the time to worry about those things as he still had to save that girl and get away as there could be other orcs. Mine's body was getting tired, and then he used the wind attribute and then used the magic recovery on himself. He noticed that there are still more orcs and wondered how orcs can use magic. He noticed that there was an orc general of level 27, stunned to see him as the orc general are the king's guards, an enemy who can only be defeated by a group of kingdom knights, the orc king's general aide, and questioned why they are in the Lucas forests. But the moment he noticed that the worst king of the orcs was also there, the scene shifted where Sulfide said that the wind is bad. Aisha asked if that's true, she had defeated an orc in the forest. She confirmed saying that she killed four of them when she had become an adult. Then she asked why there are orcs in the forest. She said that they got lost there, it's what she told her. The orc's habitat was quite far from the forest as if they connected the orc's habitat to the royal capital, and asked if Luca's forest was just a middle point. Sulfide asked why she meant if and asked if she was saying that they were advancing towards the royal capital. Aisha said that it's just a guess. Sulfide asked her to wait, saying if that's the case then it's not just the orc then the king of orcs would be in the forest. Just then they heard a loud noise as they noticed that the forest was burning and they were worried about mine. Aisha rushed inside the forest. The scene shifted where mine was badly injured. As he saw that they were using the fire magic and he also wasn't able to use his recovery magic as the high orcs are acting as meat shields hiding the orcs. And realized that to steal the general's skills he has to defeat the high orcs first but just then he was attacked by the spell as mine fell back. He realized that he didn't have the strength to use recovery skills and accepted that he can't do anything and considered that to be the end for him. Just then he heard a voice telling him not to give up. Mine looked up and realized that it's the Ajha who was there attacking the orcs with her arrows. Just then she warned him to look behind him as an orc was about to attack. Mine, startled from behind, dodged as he saw the orc about to attack, but he really didn't have the strength. Just then, Sulfide came there and swung her sword, cutting down the orc. She said that she has never seen Aisha worried and asked if he is okay. Mine confirmed to her as Aisha came there and asked if Mine was insane, telling him not to go out there alone. Mine thanked her and asked why they were there. Mine asked about the lady as Sulfide asked him to hurry up and heal. She said that they still have to face some of the worst opponents. Sulfide saw the orc general and three of them too, saying that Aisha might be right. And the fact that there are orc generals and the orc king could also be in that forest. The orc general was casting the spell as Sulfide asked them to run away as the situation is bad now, something that three people can't handle. But mine said that it's fine as the general finally showed up and they can stop them, as there's nothing they can do anymore. Mine stole all the skills from the orc as he asked them to escape and he will defeat them. Sulfide asked him not to be stupid as he is no match and even three people can't go against one of them. Mine agreed to that and said that the orcs had captured someone and as long as he is alive he will save her. Then Aisha agreed, saying in that case she will help mine as Sulfide said that it's not possible, and they should run away as there are orcs. Just then they heard a voice saying that it's interesting as they were stunned to hear and asked who's there as they saw it's the most dreaded worst king of orcs as they were stunned to see him as mine wondered what he was doing there. As they were stunned to see the orc king there, just then the orc king punched down. Mine grabbed them and asked them to be careful as they tumbled down. Mine coughed in pain as they were thrown that far, though it wasn't a direct hit. It was a terrifying power, and he realized that it would be suicidal to fight him while he is that powerful. Mine considered that he had to steal his skills and make him weak. Just then, a smoke screen appeared in front of their eyes, and they were stunned to see that he had disappeared. Mine looked behind and noticed that the ladies were captured by the orcs. He was stunned and asked when they got behind them, as he jumped to save them, but just then, he was punched by the orc king. 
Aisha was worried as Aisha tried his health recovery, but he realized that it's such power that even his health recovery wasn't working. Sulfid screamed out, warning him to look behind him as he turned around. The Orc King was behind him, asking if he's still resisting and asked him to try that out. Then he was getting ready to hit him with full force his mind was stunned and wondered how a giant could get into his back so quickly. He considered that he only attacks with his arms, and he'll dodge those and steal his skills. But just then, he noticed that the king was attacking him with a weapon. The king attacked mine, and there was a great shock all over the forest. The whole city shook due to the impact as Edgar was stunned to feel that. Just all of them were worried about him as the smoke disappeared. Mine was still standing there as the king was stunned to see that and was angry, asking how can a lowly human like him break his axe. Mine's axe was broken, but the king said that now he is wide open. Just then, Mine got the chance and was able to steal the skills of the king. As the king was about to cast the spell, he was stunned to see that he can't use any as Mine had finally got that and used the king's intimidation. He asked the generals to let go of them, and the generals left the ladies. Aisha asked if Mine had done something as Mine asked them to get away from there as he will attack the king with his full power. The king didn't believe and said it can't be that he stole his skills. Just then, Mine used the fire magic as it covered the area. Mine asked them to run away immediately as Sulfid asked Aisha to listen to Mine as they will only hold him back from going all out. As Mine uses the range magic wind and then the magic water, Sulfid wonders just how many skills does Mine have. Just then, Mine used the earth magic and spikes of stones emerged from the earth and pierced through the skin of orcs. Sulfid praised, saying that he is amazing, as Mine wondered if he killed the king. He looked above and saw the orc king rushing towards him, being mad at him, and asked how he dared try to hurt him as he punched Mine. Mine blocked that with his sword, able to defend that attack, but his sword was broken as Mine realized that he got no mana left and now he needs to fight hand to hand. But as he looked at the stats and realized that he still has another weapon, the one which he dreamt of even since he was little, he can see it appear crystal clear as the Orc King said that he recognized his power and considered him a threat. And so with his own hand he said that he is going to end him right there. As Sylphide realized that it's bad and called out Aisha, saying that they have to help Mine. Just then they notice a bright light emerging from Mine's hand as Mine said that it was his father who read to him his favorite story as the King Orc was stunned to see that light. Mine said that it was about a hero named Alexandrite and his sword which he always dreamt of as the king orc was scared to see and recognize the power as Mine with bright eyes called out the holy sword, and a bright sword appeared in his hand. As seeing the bright sword in Mine's hand, Aisha remembered the same story, and wondered if the story was real back then and now in front of her Mine is standing, making her question if he is the real hero. As Mine was holding the sword, he realized that the twirling is sucking his mana and at that rate his mana will run out. As the king was mad asked why he had that skill and about to attack him as Aisha was about to rush, but Sulfid stopped her saying that right now mine is focusing on the king's hostility on himself and if they come out and disturb its hostility then they will get in the way of mine. As mine there realized that he has to finish it early and he can't stand the consumption of mana. As he swung his sword and it cuts the hand of the orc king as he was stunned to see that his skin is easily cut as the king orc gets mad as then mine used his wind magic and got close and slashed the king orc again as then he kept on using his skills and was hurting the orc king as Aisha was amazed to see that mine is overwhelming the orc king. But then mine realized that the power of twirling is already weakened as the orc king laughed saying with that small body he can't go any longer but said that he can handle more as he attacked mine and he fell to the ground as just then there was a bright light covering mine as the king wondered what's that it was as it was Aisha as Sulfid said that she will leave mine's recovery to her and she will deal with the orc king as well. The orc king gets mad and rushed towards them saying that now they will give birth to his children as only a few orcs are left and now both then will be him but mine stood up saying that he won't let him as then mine used his leg strengthening skill and pasted it on him as the king orc was stunned and confused about his legs as the king orc was scared as just then mine used his martial arts skill and jumped up and cuts down the king orc in half as the king orc screams out saying that it's impossible as mine gets down and that the twirling has disappeared and he is already empty. As just then he is about to fall as Aisha grabs him as mine was relieved to see Aisha was safe as he apologized saying that he used a lot of magic as Aisha was in tears saying that he is such a child and he really just messed up and said that he is worried about him and asked him to take good care of himself. As the sulfide came there saying that he is ridiculous as mine saw the night girl and asked about the orc king as Sulfid said that he defeated a disaster class monster by himself as Mine was relieved as he was able to protect that Lady Aisha and the knight as Sulfid wonders that she is sure that it's not her whom he protected but also the lives of those country and its people. As the scene shifted at the mine house where Aisha and Sulfid were having tea, 
Aisha informed him that the woman who was captured in the orc village was safely protected and there was no noticeable trauma and no physical pain. She said that she is very grateful to Mine. Mine replied that he was worried all the time during the fight against the orc king and the general and said that he is really glad. Then Sulfid said that in the battle with the orc king, Mine had used 14 skills in that and asked may she know that mystery. But Mine apologized saying that he can't say anything about his skills and apologized for his inconvenience. Then Sulfid said that she thinks that it's good and asked him not to reveal it to those whom he doesn't trust. However, she said she knows about both of the skills that he has been given. Mine was stunned and said that he hadn't told anyone. Sulfid said apparently she doesn't know, but she is proud of being a little known and said if it's him then he should understand. Mine was nervous and wondered if she knew about his appraisal or if she was talking about his appraisal, and wondered who that person was. Then he looked at her stats and the moment he saw that she's the prince's, he was nervous and was fumbling saying how rude he was and asked what he should do. As he was stunned as Mine had given her a command back then, Sulfid asked him to calm down and said that he is her savior and called him, saying that she said that she came to see him. As then Mine was calmed down as she said that he thought that he won't ever see the princess. Sulfid said that she should apologize too, and she didn't think the news would be shocking to him. And moreover, she said she is not in any high position that he will never encounter. As Aisha realized that the princess is actually there to give Mine an important request related to the royal family and realized that the princess is definitely towards Mine. As just then Mine interrupted Aisha asking if she is not feeling well. As Aisha gets nervous and assures that she is alright and asks them to continue. Then Sulfid asked me if he knows what policy the royal family is currently pursuing. As he replied that he does not know a lot about the royal family's business, as all he knows is that the king has an amazing skill. Sulfid confirmed saying that the royal family internationally organizes events to obtain the best skills and said that he probably knew that the skills are inherited but there are many children that don't inherit the skills of their parents. And that's why the royal family needs to know the skills of every citizen without any exceptions. As Mine realized that the women with good skills will become royal wives and men will be invited to be sons of the royalty. And in other words, the activity is conducted in order to find people capable of protecting the country. And so Sulfid said that recently they have received information about a boy with a pretty interesting skill, and said that boy is the one who became an adult and killed four orcs and also heard that he had won against a C-class adventurer, and right in front of them defeated a monster of a terrifying power, and that is considered as even his father no one from the royal family would be able to do that single-handedly, as Mine understood that the princess has come to him and her request is to. Sulfid said that her request is and said that she wants him to become her husband as Mine was nervous as he knew that as he was blushing as Sulfid asked him if he remembers how he fought with the orc king, his courage, and how he protected them, as she said that she understands how he was charmed like an ordinary girl so that is almost unrelated to his skill or the royal family. As Mine was stunned and asked how can a cute girl like her would like someone like him and he considered that it might be a dream as it's impossible for the princess to come there and ask for him to become her husband as it was just unbelievable and also think that it's bad that it's a dream and yeah if it wasn't a dream then it would be awesome. As Sulfid said, she thinks that Aisha also has the same feelings towards Mine as Mine was stunned and coughed to hear that Aisha also feels the same as Aisha asked if he's okay and blamed Sulfid saying that it's all because she said something like that as the Sulfid said that she is totally not against Aisha becoming his wife too as after all the royal family needs as many heirs as possible so it isn't bad and asked him to let she and Aisha let him bear a child for him as Mine again spits out the water as Aisha asked Sulfid to think about what she is saying and asked if her sophisticated elegance just for show. As Sulfid asked didn't Aisha do not actually want to have a child from mine. As they were arguing mine looked at them and wondered that for five years he was always alone and in a home where nobody welcomed him and in the table where he used to be alone and now there is the same laughter that was once there and other voices than his as he wonder all the things that were taken from him and his family right in front of his eyes and the skills steals others skills and if someone were to find out that such a skill exists then they would definitely turn him away to always fear that someone will find out to always be hurt and if he continues to do it he questioned will he ever be able to create a family. As if someone finds out about its power, then definitely all those smiles and happiness that he experiences will be taken away from him again. And so he apologized to them, saying he is very happy to hear that they feel that way towards him but said he does not think he can accept it. As Sylphide realized and said that he is scared that someone will find out about his skill. Mine was stunned to hear that as Sylphide was confirmed by his expressions and said that she already knows his two skills and asked why does he continue to be afraid that someone will find out. 
and asked why he kept on avoiding people and asked why he wanted to suffer so much as she adams her hand saying she is sure if he didn't have that skill something terrible would have happened and said that his true power is much more than what he could imagine but asked did he actually want to continue to bear that burden alone or did he really want to live without telling anybody about his skills and asked if he is really happy with such a life. As she kept on saying that he will suffer not because he will hide his skill his whole life, but because he will truly remain alone and in that world he won't find any more people who will understand himself and ask did he truly want that. As Maya wondered that people whom he could tell his secrets to are no longer there and the people from the village who supported him he is scared that they will find out about his skills and will leave him he questions if he has to leave from the house and from all the villagers, but he does not want to. As he was in tears he tells them that he doesn't want that and he does not want to be alone again as he sobs. He said that he is being alone and he will be fine even if he walks alone but for some reason he still cried. As he said that he just wants to hear welcome back and he wants to eat together with everyone and spend some more time with his parents but he asked why everything disappeared. As Aisha realized and couldn't believe as all the time he suffered so much as she always saw him smiling as just then she rushed and hugged mine as she was in tears as she assured him that she will always be by his side and he realized may not tell him about his skill so don't worry about it anymore and said that every day she will going to save welcome back and every day she will cook for him and every day she will eat together as whatever happens she will never leave him and said she will create a home in which he will be able to return as the sylphid gets close and asks Aisha if she wants to marry him. As Aisha was all red saying that she is nine years older and she thinks that mine is against it as mine said that he is so happy as the sylphie bow in front of him and apologized to him as mine gets panicked and said that it's fine and asked him to stop worrying. As Sulfide said that she also wants to create a place where he would feel cozy and she wants to become the girl to whom he can rely on and to protect him with her life. As mine thanked her and asked their allowance to say something and asked them to become his family. As the scene shifted, Mine got up, realizing that he overslept as the sun was already so high. He felt that something smelled good and wondered what that was. Then, he got out of the room as Aisha and Sulfide were there. Aisha greeted him good morning and said that breakfast would be ready soon. Aisha, too, greeted him good morning and said he surely was late today. Mine was glad to hear and greeted them back. Then, Aisha served breakfast. Mine was amazed to see that and said that it looks delicious and asked if Aisha made that. As Aisha told him to eat up as much as he can, Mine commented that it's so tasty and asked if she found those ingredients somewhere in the house. She said early this morning he went to the market with the princess. Sulfide said Aisha is surprisingly popular around there as just from walking she received a lot of sorts and gifts and things from people. Aisha said back then when she was an adventurer she used to live there and there were a lot of familiar faces there and said she is glad that nobody changed a bit. Mine asked about her being an adventurer. Aisha asked, didn't he know that? The princess said that it hurts to admit but Aisha is even stronger than her and she's even powerful enough to have the nickname the Holy Bow. Then, Sulfide gave him an expression as Mine wonders if she meant if she is telling him to use the appraisal. Aisha was telling that she is undeserving of such a nickname the Holy Bow, and the person before her was the kind of person who left a mark in history. Mayan saw her stats and was shocked to see that she is so strong that she's a B-tier adventurer which is even higher than Lyle. Aisha asked Mayan what happened as he got nervous and denied that it's nothing as then he realized that they both did fake high-level orcs with ease. Then, Aisha said to the princess that they should ask Mayan about the clan thing. And so they asked if Mayan wanted to make a clan with two of them and assured that the role of the leader would belong to him as Mayan was clueless about the clan. The princess said that it's like a smaller, more personally managed guild. She said that to form one they need her father, the king's approval but creating one he can earn some special privileges. Mine asked about those special privileges. Sulfide said unlike the guilds who take requests from the public, clans are able to take on unique confidential missions from nobles and the royal family and as a result of that special arrangement, every clan member's personal information becomes protected by the country. Mine was still clueless about the personal information and asked about it as she mentioned for instance. Unless he gave strict permission information about his skills then he can't be requested by anyone including the king. And if someone does try to pressure him for his information then they can be tried by the state and basically the private details about any of their skills will be guarded by the law. Mine was amazed to hear that his skills will be protected as also Aisha told him since clans are fully managed by individuals. As the leader, he would be able to pick whatever mission he likes and he does not have to just take requests from nobles as he can still accept missions from ordinary citizens and villagers. As amazed and asked if the whole plan arrangement is solely for their benefit. The princess said that he said he wanted to repay his debt to the town of the people. Mine asked if they can really set up a clan with just three of them. 
The princess said that it's up to her father, the king, to decide as there are quite a few of your plans that exist in the country, but there are three in particular that stand out from the rest. She told him that the first one was created by an alchemist and goes by the alchemist's library. Then there's a whirling dust cloud who takes on missions that exclusively focus on assault and protection. A man named Cashew, an Atir adventurer, is their leader. And lastly, there is the guild composed of tamers who conquered monsters and magical beasts called the Tamer's Ring. They're led by an Atir adventurer called Tails. And mentioned each of these three guilds have about ten members each as mine was stunned to hear the number of people. Sulfid said despite that size they still are far more structurally composed and reliable than guilds with over 100 members like the one he was a part of and said that the key to that level of structural integrity in her opinion is that members trust in each other and with the likes of Aisha she believes that they could form a trio powerful enough to travel an army. And if she can get strong enough to be a princess knight that even mine can rely on then they could become a warrior clan just like whirling dust clouds. And decided to become strong as Aisha also agreed saying even though she went to save mine she ended up being captured by that general. And in front of the orc king too her feet froze and she couldn't do a thing. As Sulfid said that she wants to get close to mine even if just a little for those purposes she promised to make her father approve of their clan. Mine gets mad and asks what the hell they two are saying and told them if Silphid was not there then he would have been killed by that orc and he was only able to slay the orc king because Aisha helped him and alone he wouldn't have accomplished anything, and said that it was thanks to both of them that he was able to defeat the king and ask them if they understood as they did it together. As they smiled at his behavior and agreed to him as Silphid smiled saying that it's the first time that he has called her name not only that but without honorifics too and thanked him as Aisha was also happy as mine dropped honorifics for her too. Mine realized and immediately apologized to the princess for taking her name. Then the scene shifted where Sulfid called out Mine as master saying that she will be borrowing the corpses of that orc, king, and the general and if you show them to the father the chances of getting their client approved will surely increase as Mine agreed to her saying that he will leave that to her. As she confirmed saying that she thinks it should take around five days for their application to get through and she won't be back until then. As Aisha mentioned, she will also be going to the capital in order to officially resign from the guild but said that she should be back by tonight. Then they both left as Mine was glad to see them and asked Aisha to take care of Silphid as they went to the town a carriage passed through Silphid and Aksha as the person inside that carriage noticed Silphid asked isn't that the princess and asked what her highness was doing in the place like that as it looked like she came out of that house and asked his butler if he saw that as he confirmed and called his master Claude saying that it's the same princess he proposed to not too long ago. As Claude asked him to figure out why she came out of that dilapidated rut. As the scene shifted to the town where Mine entered the weapon shop, the shopkeeper was on the stairs and called out to Mine as he was shocked by a sudden call, and asked what was wrong. As the shopkeeper said, he was tending to that weapon and asked what he needed now as he just bought a weapon the other day. As Mine told him that he actually broke that and he is there to buy a new dagger. The shopkeeper was shocked to hear that he broke that as he liked the broken dagger and realized that it's in pretty bad shape and asked did he try to crush a diamond of something as Mine told him that he actually broke while fighting against an orc king. The shopkeeper didn't believe his ears and asked again as Mine hesitated and changed that saying that it was a high orc. As then the shopkeeper asked him to take a look and pick a dagger he wanted as then Mine started to look around and realized that he wasn't seeing anything resembling steel. As then he saw a dagger and was amazed saying that the dagger is pure black as he liked at that stats and saw that it has an attribute of growth and wonders about it as then Mine confirms that he wants that blade as the shopkeeper asked if he is really okay with that and said that it will look cool but all it's good for its dismembering game. As mine replied that it's gone as he broke that knife he used to use for that too and now for the other blade he will take. The shopkeeper looked at him and called him, asking if he really killed an orc king. Then mine agreed to him as he was stunned to hear and asked if he did alone. But mine denied, saying that he was with his friends. And then the shopkeeper asked them why didn't he give that dagger a shot and he went up to get that dagger saying this dagger was actually interesting to him by a close friend. Back then when he used it, that weapon was full of lightning energy. But at the same time he died, the lightning disappeared. He told him that these days it's nothing more than a really sharp blade but asked why don't he try to hold it. At the moment Mayan holds that he realizes that it's true that there's a lightning energy inside that blade and it looks like it never fully lost its power after all. And not that's all he strangely feels incredibly nostalgic. The shopkeeper was able to see his friend in mine, as mine was praising the blade but noticed the shopkeeper was in tears as he called out and asked about it. 
as the shopkeeper fumbled an excuse that some smile might have gone into his eyes, and said to mine if he likes that then he will give that to him for free and will not charge as mine denied saying that he cannot accept that as it is a memento from a treasured friend. As the shopkeeper held him saying that he did not mind even if he kept saying that he wouldn't do anything but said mine should use that, and he pleased mine to let him see the blade's true form one more time. As mine said that he will try as then mine left and thanked the shopkeeper for the amazing weapon as once he gets the lightning to come back he will definitely return and will show that to him. As mine leaves the shopkeeper wonders that the dagger once belonged to mine's father and he is sure that it will protect him and serve him well. As the scene shifted where mine sets out on a new adventure as then he was fighting a monster as he uses his multiple skills to defeat that monster as Aisha and Sylphid were there to support him as they interact with each other and coordinate attack the monster and finally defeat him as Aisha praised mine saying that he did great work and said that she was shocked when that rock came flying out of nowhere and asked if rock splash is their signature skill after all. Just then, the wall started to move and a gate opened in front of them. They went in and saw a bright light. Mine asked about it, and Aisha said that it's a transportation stone. She explained that if they touch it, they will be transported all the way back to the labyrinth's entrance. Aisha mentioned that they will also be able to return here via the stone at the entrance. As Aisha said, the trolls they were looking for should be on the floor beneath them and asked what he wanted to do. As Mine said, they will call that for there today as they will continue tomorrow. As they touched the stone and just in an instant they were in the entrance of the labyrinth as mine considered that the stone is handy but that kind of reminds him how the orc king was able to move as then Aisha asked mine to look for some in somewhere. As then they get in the town as everyone was there enjoying as mine said that the town is very lively for the middle of nights as Aisha told him that there are plenty of people overflowing with energy as it's the labyrinth city of Adol and mine had no clue that a place like that existed just north of Lucas as Aisha said. The only ones who come there are people taking on the labyrinth and she guessed that they all are hunting for resources too. As in the labyrinth the labyrinth of power there's a lot of unsolved mystery, and there are certainly those just looking for resources but most adventurers come to investigate the unknown. And the biggest mystery to be solved is the eerily endless supply of monsters and no matter how many disappear the monsters keep emerging from what seems like thin air as mine asked did they never go away. As Aisha said every species of monster down there is unique to the labyrinth, and they do not even really understand their core system yet. The labyrinth of power has existed since ancient times and theories of its purpose range from a road leading to hell to a practical joke made by God. Everyone exploring the labyrinth is in search of the fabled lowest floor. She mentioned that these days more and more people are settling down there to challenge the labyrinth and all those adventurers are the ones who have made the city what it is today. As mine wondered, the reason why he came there was to collect the troll heights as he needed for his starting dagger. And when he asked Aisha where he could find trolls she told him about that time. As Aisha asked Mine to look at that dwarf's shop and mentioned that he got a sword that looks like the dagger he has as they visit his hole, and Mine saw a starting bow, and a starting swords and considered that Sylphide and Aisha could use that as the dwarf called Mine and said if he is thinking of challenging the labyrinth then it's best for him to forget about using them as weapons, and said that folks in the maze dig up every once in a blue moon which was rare, and they are frail as a leaf, and said that he would just nick that blade while fighting a slime and if he tries to pull back that bowstring the knock of the bow will snap right off. As the dwarf said if he is gonna challenge the maze then do not buy them and if they do buy them he asks them not to challenge the maze. As mine asked Aisha did she think that they would buy those. As Aisha said to her the weapons do not really feel like banes at all. And asked him to go ahead and just call them part of the beginner gear. And so mine said that they will take the bow and the sword as they took it then Aisha asked mine to go for an inn as she is starving. As mine saw the crowd, mine held the hand of Aisha and said that it was very crowded in front and said it would get very bad if they lost sight of each other. Aisha blushed to see that as then they got into an inn which looked like a higher end but everywhere else was completely booked and so they have a little money saved co as Aisha told mine that the place has. A medicine bath as mine asked about it Aisha told him that basically the water has restorative properties and can heal sounds and fatigue and it feels great. As mine realized that it's some kind of potion. As mine was amazed to see the medicine bath as just then a human beast came from behind and grabbed mine and welcomed him to the silver bell and praised him saying he is quite cute. As Aisha was stunned to see her and asked what she was doing. As the human beast asked about Aisha as she said that she is his newlywed wife. 
and so the human beast said that then SH will lead them to one of their suits and they charge one gold coin per guest as Mayan said that it's expensive as just then Aisha grabbed Mayan saying that it sounds good as the scene shifted where they were stunned to see their room so huge as there was the medicinal bath in the room itself as Mayan liked at the medicine bath and feels that it warm and it feels great as then Mayan asked if they go in with their clothes on not she denied saying that the goes in being naked as both of them were shy to hear that as Mayan said since the bath is full view anyways and asked if she wanted to go on together. Together, as she agreed saying that after all they are couples. As the scene shifted to the royal capital, Sylphide was there when her brother arrived and mentioned that he had heard about the marriage, and told her that unfortunately for her her partner must first pass the inspection of him and his loyal brother Alto Augusta as the likes of those who do big possess a powerful skill will not easily. But she just walks always and ignores him. As his brother gets mad seeing that as Sylphide said that her husband is one who brought down the orc king and plus her father had already given him the approval for her marriage. He was stunned to hear that as Alto said that he will meet that person directly and as she denied saying that it would be dangerous if he got infected by the hot-headedness of his. As she gets in and screams out asking her father if he has yet come to the decision about their clan. As her father said that she came at the perfect time and said that she has a visitor as it was Claude there who greeted Sylphide saying that she is looking pretty as Sylphide saw him he was the Lord Roselia's eldest son as Sylphide asked what business did they have and asked didn't see already turned down his marriage proposal. As Claude said, he recently caught wind of something that didn't sit right with him. As Claude said that he saw that the princess has married to a powerless penniless commoner which is such an act that threatens to tarnish the royal bloodline and it's simply something he cannot accept both as a citizen and a noble of that fine nation. And said with that in mind he would like to propose the competition between himself and that boy and if he wins she will dispose of her marriage as he would like to show her the proof that the boy is as unnecessary in her life as she believes. As the scene shifts, Mine heads to the dungeon once more. As they head back to the dungeon, Mine realizes that they are back at the same spot as yesterday, and considers the transport stone amazing. Aisha said, it's certainly an amazing setup, as if only there was a skill that did the same thing. Then the princess could come back from the castle in an instant. Then, she asked Mine to head down. There were stairs going down as they rushed in. Mine asked, what's in there? As Mine asked, she said that there's a cacatrice and asked her to watch out for its talons. As the scene shifted, inside, Keith and his adventurers were struggling with the fight against the monster. Keith asked them to grab its attention and asked Ammon to take care of the injured. Ammon told him not to be ridiculous, as there's no way he will be able to do something that dangerous. He said that he will repay the debt he owes for accepting him into the party, even if that kills him. Just then, Keith attacked the monster and told him if he wanted to repay his debt, then asked him to repay it by protecting their team members no matter what. Just then, two of the adventurers get hurt as Keith screams out to Ammon that he will leave that to him and goes to see them. He asked Liz to wake up, saying this isn't the time to be resting. Meanwhile, Ammon checked his bag to use the potion and was scared to find out that there was none left. Meanwhile, Keith was struggling to fight that demon as their talons contained venom that would turn them into stone. He said that he would be turning into a B-tier adventurer and said that he would be taking those claws. Keith rushed towards the monster to attack him and cut down a claw of it, but he was stunned to see the talking just in front of him as the monster attacked him. He fell down as he captured Keith with its claw as the talon hurt him as Keith was struggling as the poison was getting effective. Just then, the talon screams in pain as Keith sees that it was mine and slashed the talon. Then mine used the shark glow as a bright light emerged. Keith was stunned to see the power as there's a big crack in the wall. Keith said that it was like a natural disaster as Aisha came there asking if they were safe. She looked out that Keith's whole hand was turned into stone as Aisha asked Mayan not to overdo it. Keith thanked both of them for rescuing them and said that he is glad everyone is safe. Mayan asked what brought him all the way to the labyrinth. Keith said there are many reasons as morale in the guild has been decreasing lately and to try and fix it the guild leader ordered everyone to go and explore labyrinths around the kingdom but said with that arm he values life more than the guild's morale. Mine asked what exactly caused the morale problem. Keith knocks him, saying that it's because he can get Aisha married and sad most of the guild members have their spirit shattered. Mine apologized to him as Liz said to Aisha that Keith may act mad but he is actually happy for them. Keith asked Liz to stop and said that they are going home. Then Keith stopped and said that he almost forgot and gave Aisha the boots telling her to keep it as those are their speed shoes and he has never seen them before. But Aisha called out saying that those items belong to him as Keith told them if they do not want them they can throw them away as they are not going to use them. Aisha thanked them as Keith greeted them and asked them not to die. As in their way, Keith said that Mayan was crazy and wondered how he went from a brat to being so strong. 
They asked what they meant. He told them a few days ago they were attacked by bandits on their trip back to Lucas and mine was also on that by then, and at the time he has stuck his head out of the back before anyone else and he can only hope that was bravery rather than carelessness. As Ammon said, everything is fine as mine cares about protecting others more than anything else as he knows that he is someone who was rescued by him. Ammon noticed Alfred and asked why he had been crying the entire time. Keith says it's because Alfred used to have a crush on Asia. As then the scene shifted inside the labyrinth as they were getting in the field that the place is much damp than before as Asia told him that trolls like humid environments and told him to be careful as he proceeds. Mine gets in and just then he notices something and told Asia about that as that disappeared as then Mine used his surrounding skill and realized that the walls are completely covered with slimes. Just then they started to make steam as Asia said that this isn't steam, it's similar to the medicine bath. Mine holds Aisha's hand and asked her not to let go as then he looked into their stats as they realized that they have passive skills water, and some have passive skills heat, and Mine understood that they are mixing their skills together to generate steam but wonder why they are making steam as it's not going to harm anyone. Aisha asked if he had noticed that as she told him that the trolls like humidity, and the slimes are emitting steam and Mine realized and used his wind magic and removed the steam and realized that the slimes were drawing the attention of the trolls. As Mine saw them and asked Aisha to look out, Mine looked at their ability and saw that they got regeneration, which is a high level. He asked Aisha to get back as he is going to test how powerful the troll really is. Aisha agreed to him, then Mine decided to see what the regeneration skill is actually capable of. He rushed there and cut down the hands of the trolls. Aisha was amazed to see Mine's movement as they are way faster and stronger than when she fought the Orc King. However, she realized that Mine seemed more surprised. Mine was amazed as he didn't realize that he had become so fast and wondered after he took down the Orc King. His level increased dramatically, and even he noticed that when he was fighting the Cacatrice, but when he unleashes too much of our things, get dangerous for those around him. Then Mine noticed that the arm that he chopped off earlier grew back as the troll was about to attack him. Aisha screamed out, telling him not to lose focus. Just then, a slime behind him attacked him as its overwhelming power that Mine wasn't able to escape as the trolls were getting close. He wondered what he should do. Then Aisha shot her arrows and saved Mine as she thanked her. Aisha realized that Mine is still not used to fighting against multiple opponents, and it seems like he is too focused on one target but said even against the strongest enemies he cannot beat, she will still help out when she can. Then Mine slashed the trolls, saying that they won't be able to regenerate his wounds anymore. The trolls were defeated but realized that the slimes were still releasing steam as Aisha asked, doesn't that remind him about the medicine bath last night? Mine remembered how they both were close and how Akash rubbed his back as Aisha was shy, and denied that she meant by the water. They realized that the vapor was thickening. Just then they heard a vibration and realized that it's footsteps and suspected a bad scenario as they realized that it's the monster that physically builds that surpasses the Orc King's ability to regenerate faster than trolls. The monster that serves as the floor's master has taken the lives of countless adventurers, which is the disaster level ranking the troll's gazer. As Aisha said even with his sluggish movement it's powerful as an Orc King. She suggested looking for an opening and escape as Mine heard that it's as powerful as an orc king and so he realized that he got some incredible skills and considered that to him it's nothing but a big monster. As Aisha asked him to retreat but Mine got in front and used his magic as he told Aisha that he is going to defeat the monster and then they can use the transport stone downstairs to go home as Aisha was stunned to see that light it's what took down the orc king. As the scene shifted at the carriage where Mine was taking rest as Aisha wondered that he really defeated the troll gazer and considered him that he is very strong. But consider that there are times when they run into battle without experience and both her and the princess will continue to support him in order to help him become stronger but wonder what if something were happened to him in a place where she and the princess wouldn't be at. As Mine woke up and asked if she's okay. As she looked tired as Aisha assured that she is fine and said if anyone is tired it's probably him. As Mine assured me that he slept this whole time so he feels great. Then they reached Lucas City as Aisha asked Lucas to make Mine feel like home as he agreed saying that he really likes that place. As then an old man saw Aisha and said that it looks like she is back as Aisha called him Rock and said that it's been so long that she actually got married as Aisha introduced Rock to Mine saying that he is an extremely skilled carpenter as he is the man who built their guild's bathtub as Mine asked about it Aisha told him that it's like the ones they saw in the silver bell as Rock told them if they had stayed in the cat ladies inn he was the one to make those. As Mine was amazed and asked could he make make a bathtub for his house too. As the scene shifted, Rock Cotton believed seeing Mine's house and asked if he was Dine's son. Mine asked if he knows his dad. 
He agreed, saying there is nobody in Lucas who didn't know about Dian and Yukino. He said when he was a kid, Dian was a legendary archer he admired. Mine was amazed to hear that. Then Rick asked if Mine had the magic tools. Mine asked about it as Rock mentioned that to draw water from the well for the bath, and to turn the water into hot water without the two magic tools they cannot have a bath, and besides magic tools are very expensive it costs no less than 2,000 gold coins and that is the reason by baths used only by royals and nobles. Mine was worried about 2,000 gold coins and realized that they need slime to change water into hot water. Just then he realized and said that he will prepare the items so he can take a bath. Rock told Mine to leave that to him as he has some free time on his hand so he can work on it tomorrow and assured him that he will be back later with his apprentice. As he left, Aisha asked how he was going to prepare the tools. He told her not to worry as he will figure that out. He said that he is going to dismantle the room to dismantle the trolls and she can go home and rest. She agrees, saying that she will rest until the master comes. Then Mine entered the room as there was a dismantled room in the house his father left him. He wanted to make an amazing bath for the families that come to that house and then he decided to make a magic tool to dismantle it. He wondered that the Hindi labyrinth ability of the movement of stones was similar to the Orc King's instantaneous movement. The Orc King's skills are realized as the King's intimidation and said if the King uses that skill to cross space then it has the same effect as the transfer stone. As the transfer stone is connected to the place and firstly he decided to start with the same procedure and use space-time as that is the place where those slimes are in the labyrinth's ability is then a new magic space-time and then just then there was a portal in front of him and steam is coming out. And wonder if there are slides as then he entered the portal and saw that it's slimes and he was sure that he is definitely in the labyrinth of ability. As just then the hole disappeared and he realized that it's no time to be surprised and in that case, he considered that he needs to use destruction and then use this line's skill to make a magic tool before they come and take a stone and decide to make that into a magic tool. As then he looked at the stats of the slime and decided to paste the skill of slime onto the stone. As then he passed it and was amazed to see that it actually worked and then next he said that they should be able to stop the water at will. And wonder if we can do and said he is right if as he can do that as then he caused the spell this page time and activated and used it to stop the time for that being and noticed that it stopped as everything going well. And then he decided to heat the stone as the water is getting warmer he understood that maybe a little bit of constant heat would help but then he tried to balance the heat and then he finally did that and now he liked at the stats to see if they can use that for the bath. As he was stunned to see that he had created a magical hot spring and realized even a small amount of the magical spring is amazing. Just then a troll came as mine was nervous as he considered that he had no use for them and decided to get out of here before they realized as then he remembered about the troll's regeneration skills and wondered if it would fix the dagger which he broke while fighting the orc king. As then from the portal Aisha's voice came saying that the craftsman is looking for him as mine was stunned to realize that he can listen to the other side too. As then the orc heard him and rushed towards mine as just then mine cut the skill of the orc and slashed the hand of the orc as the hand gets in the portal with mine as just then Aisha entered and seeing mine like that asked her get under a hand as mine excuse saying that he tried to dismember it. Then mine gets with Aisha as she tells him that they are waiting in the living room. On his way mine used the regeneration skill on his dagger and was amazed to see that his dagger regenerates as Aisha looks at him and asks what happened. He gets nervous and says that it's nothing as mine was amazed as he used to regenerate on his broken weapon and fixed himself as it was creepy, but consider that very convenient. As then mine entered the room and then he talked out with Rock and made him understand the dimensions and the place to build as the apprentice of Rock started to work accordingly. After the work as it's finally done as mine was stunned to see that as it looks so amazing as Rock said that he is dealing with Dines as mine thanked him as then they left as they hadn't gone home for three days as mine and Aisha was happy to have that as half of that has no ceiling so they can stay at this guy's as Aisha said that people cannot even see it from outside so they can relax there in peace. As she said with the ray of light fluttering and the smell of trees surrounding them the bath feels like a forest in the morning. As Mayan said that he is glad that she likes that and commented that she has been a little gloomy since they were in at all and said he wanted his family to have a smile on their faces. As Aisha blushed to hear that as then Silphied was back with her brother Amayan heard her and was excited as Aisha wondered if the princess will be surprised after seeing the bath. As Mayan decided to show her right away. As they opened the gate they were excited as they saw his brother asking where the sacred bow user was. As the scene shifts, Alto gets to know that the holy bow is also married to that kid. He said that he does not seem like he is strong enough to protect two women and asked if he really took down an orc king. 
Silphet asked if he was trying to say that she was lying in her report. He ensures that she will never lie but says that he is doubting that boy. Silphet apologized to mine, saying his brother is selfish and a huge siskin and asked him to ignore him and cut him down. Alto considered that a good idea and asked how about that, and asked mine if he wanted to try him in a contest. He said that he wants to see for himself whether he can protect his women. Silphied stopped him, telling not to be foolish his father had already approved their marriage, and there's no reason for them to fight him. Alto gets mad, saying that she is his precious family and he cannot give her over to someone he does not trust. Then mine called him out and said that he accepted his challenge and said since he is precious to Silphied, and he wants Alto to accept him as Sylph and Aisha's family. Alto was ready and asked him to show what he got as then they were ready. Alto said that they will be using mock swords, but these can still do quite a bit of damage and asked him not to let his guard down. He said that there's no time limit, painting or surrender will be considered as defeat. Mine agreed to him as Silphied asked if mine is really okay with that as he does not have to go along with his brother's selfish request. Mine said he wanted to prove that to himself. He said if she hadn't been there, then he would have been killed by that orc, and he wanted to see for himself whether or not he had the power to protect them. Silphied agreed to him, and so he told him to fight to his heart's content but said that both of them will always believe in him. Mine thanked them, and then Alto said that he already knows both of these skills so told him to feel free to look at them. Mine saw his stats and was stunned to see that he had one-handed blade strength enhancement and just like the king, he also has support magic. Alto, by his expression, wondered if he uses the appraisal all, as he didn't know what he saw, as it looks like this kid wears his heart on his sleeve. Then Alto asked him to let start it as Mine was ready to face him. Just then Alto gets close to Mine and attacks him as Mine was stunned to see him and uses his iron wall to defend that as Mine was stunned to see his speed as he is practically teleporting. Then he used the sight enhancement as just then Alto was about to attack him as Mine was stunned to see him there as then he was able to block his attack with his dagger. It feels like Alto going to crush him as then he uses the leg strengthening and body enhancement and strong arm holy and make some distance him as Alto stunned to see that as just then Mine paced at him and realized that he can do that and about to attack him with a punch but just then he noticed that he took off his shoes and gets close to Mine as he was tuned to see that and Alto attacked Mine and he fell down as he was hurt. Silphied flinched and about to get in as Alto screamed out if she entered then mine would be counted as defeated as Alto wondered what had happened as the person who had defeated an orc king kept getting thrown around by his skills. Alto asked if he is giving up as mine denied, saying not yet as mine stood up thinking that he still hasn't done anything. Even a single strike as Alto looked at him and really wanted him to show his strength and decided if paste was not then he would use his support magic the speed reduction as Alto was stunned to realize his body is heavy. Just then mine used his wind magic and used to spread smoke around there as Alto wondered how he was able to use the wind magic and realized if he is using that as a smoke screen then he must be coming from above. As mine did the same, he was stunned to see that Alto used his speed increase skill to negate the skill reduction. Silphied said that she knew that brother was strong but for mine who killed a disaster level would not be able to lay a finger on him as mine realized that Alto has three skills and wondered why he seems so strong when he has so few. As Alto realized that mine doesn't have much battle experience and his attacks are straightforward. In duels, it's important to have the element of surprise and the ability to read. He realized that now he had to forget about the two women so he wouldn't be able to protect himself and just then Alto appeared behind him and said that he was too slow. In a real fight, he would have been dead three times over by now. Mine made her distant, realizing that he's too fast. Mine realized that Alto had been attacking him from the back. Just then he realized and wondered if Alto had moved behind him and so he should also strike from behind. He was able to get close to Alto and he was able to hit him. It's the first time he has touched him. Alto smiled, saying he did a good job, it's what is called reading. Mine realized that he had been reading everything up till now, and so he decided that he will just have to move faster so that Alto cannot read him. He used his aura elimination, they were stunned to see that Mine just disappeared. Alto was surprised and wondered what's that, as he can't see him but wondered if he was just running circles around him and realized that his movements are so irregular. Alto realized that his movements are superhuman and fast that he can't read him. But, however, he asked if he dared to challenge his speed. He closed his eyes and wondered when he was of Mine's age his father showed him what the true strength was by beating him to pulp. Mine was a little worried as he jumped to attack Alto. 
Alto was ready to show him as it's his turn to show what the real strength is, as the first princess and as a brother but just then Alto was stunned to see Mayan so close to him as he used his sword and stabbed him in his gut and as Mayan coughed blood out Alto was also stunned to see that Mayan did land an attack on him, as he cannot believe he got so close. Silphied came running saying that Alto had gone too far and asked if he was actually trying to kill her husband and asked Aisha to help him. They carried mine inside. As the scene shifted, Sylphide was worried, saying if she knew things were going to turn out like that she would never have brought her brother. Aisha told her not to let her into her and mine will be okay and said that mine is glad that he got closer to his highness. Sylphide gets mad, saying that's what exactly she is worried about and asked what if he catches his brother over wearing personality. And stupidity she said this is her brother they're talking about as then mine would invite him over to the place for training or something and then mine will be overjoyed and just go with him. She was mad, saying even now he is ignoring and said that her stupid brother will get to bath with him in their best path, and said she is jealous as her head hurts just thinking about it. Aisha asked if she also washed mine's back too. The princess said that actually even if they were an adult there was a bath in the inn and mine and she bathed together and apologized to her that she left her out. Silphied said that it's okay as she is also the wife of mine though he is a little jealous. Then Silphied wonders if that's true and asks, doesn't that mean that her brother has a stronger relationship with mine than she does? As he wondered, he started a fight with him and got him really injured and now they have even taken a bath together and consider him a nuisance as she took the sword saying that she can't stand that anymore as she is gonna kill her brother right now as he should be in armed right now and if so then she could beat him probably. Aisha stopped her asking what she was saying as she cannot do that. As the scene shifted at the bath where Alto apologizes to Mine saying that he didn't mean to hurt him so badly as Mine told him not to worry about it and said it was thanks to Aisha's magic anti-medicine bath that he is all better now. Alto said, to think that crust organs and pulverized bones would heal so quickly and so he prays saying the medicinal water truly is amazing. Mine wonders, it's probably thanks to the recovery skill. Mine had pasted the recovery skill into a pebble in case he got injured in front of others again. And also he was so absorbed in his desire to impress his highness that he used a bunch of skills without thinking and thought that he must have noticed something was off as then Alto said that he surprised him using more than four skills like that but said that he haven't mastered any of them as Mine was stunned to hear that as Alto said that Mine relied too much on his skills and his attacks are too direct. He points out, saying that it's no good as he is way too easy to read and told him to strengthen his foundation first and told him not to rely on much on his skills. He gave him an example saying if the current state then he can tell where the water is going and it's possible to predict and ask so what should he do if he do not want to be read and answered it himself saying that it's simple he just have to change. The current as the movement he made at the end was good creating multiple currents made him hard to read but mine said that he still sees right through it as Alto said that it wasn't reading he just created a current toward himself and if he cannot read a current then making one that's another fundamental of one-on-one -on -one combat. As he told him that mine was heading toward his opening and so he used that and showed him an opening on the left. And after he did that, he could completely ignore his right and just focus on his left. But said that it was a gamble as he even lost track of how many skills he had and said that he is very impatient. Alto told him not to look worried and said that for Silphide's sake he was not planning on telling anyone about his skills, even their father the king. He mentioned that the king also had his doubts on his ability to defeat the orc king and so he questioned Silphide about it. But she said that Silphide had sworn to protect her husband for as long as she lived and so she has no intention of revealing his secrets to others and asked forgiveness for her impoliteness and selfishness and said if they do not wish to forgive her then she shall accept any punishment alone. The king heard her and laughed out, saying that's his daughter as he stood up, saying he should be the one apologizing and asked for forgiveness for asking her to reveal her own husband's secrets. Mine was glad to hear that and thanked the father for his benevolence. Mine was overwhelmed to hear that as no way Sylph had protected him even under the threat of punishment. He was in tears thinking that even though he only thought of getting the princess approval, and accidentally revealed his skills. Alto told him that it's no time for regret and said that he just wants him to ask will he use his mysterious power for the sake of Sylph and the country. Mine was clueless as Alto stood up and asked if he had ever heard of a noble name of Claude and mentioned that he is a foolish and unrefined man who has a deep obsession with wealth and social status. Mine denied that he never heard of him as Alto said that he heard that he got his hand on a dangerous item and they said that the magical items that he got has the power to destroy the country. As Alto told him about the dragon's power, it is beyond catastrophic. With the single flap of their wings, they can clear a forest. A second flap can cause a tornado capable of destroying a town. A dragon's wrath means the end of a country. They were stunned to hear that and asked if Claude tamed a dragon. 
Alto denied, saying he has a dragon youngling that seems like it was stolen from its parents. Mine asked why he would do that. Alto said that it is most likely for money as a real monster fetches a high price, but it seems like he doesn't understand their danger. If the parent finds out its child has been taken by humans, it will start destroying countries indiscriminately. The child must be returned before that happens. They planned to arrest Claude and question him but said strangely enough, Claude himself came to see the king and objects to Sylph's marriage. Wine asked about it. Alto said that he asked to duel Mine for the right to marry Sylph, and if he wins, he wants him and Sylph's marriage annulled. Mine asked how he knew that they were going to get married. He told him that Claude's house is there in Lucas, and he must have seen Sylph eat and looked into the reason why she was there, as a lot of nobles have proposed to Sylph, including Claude. But Sylph personally turns him down, but he believes that he deserves a royal position, so he wants to give up, as he plans to obtain Sylph no matter what. Aisha stood up, saying that no matter what, Mine had to fight him as Sylph had turned him down. Alto said that his insolence is intolerable, and he wanted to arrest him on the spot and make him cough up all he knows about the dragon. And then he called out to Mine and asked, Will he accept that challenge? He said that normally the king would come to ask himself, but Alto wanted to ask as his representative. Alto said, The ones who told about the dragon are Claude's dangerous gang, and it's pointless to arrest Claude as the dragon incident would not be settled unless they were round of the whole gang. Mine realized that there's a reason for accepting the challenge. Alto said Claude will use any means necessary to beat him, and he wants to use him as a decoy, as Claude certainly will. Mine realized and said that he will use his gang to fight with him. But Sylphie stood up and asked Mine not to accept it as she said that it's between her and Claude and she does not want that unsightly argument to ruin their marriage, and she didn't propose in order to use her husband as bait. Mine replied that as a family her problems are their problems and if he is in trouble then he has to accept the challenge, and also mentioned that he wants to return the dragon to its family. Aisha touched Sylphie and told her not to hear all that by herself. Alto thanked Mine saying that he is counting on his power, and said that it seems that he was holding back his power so he wouldn't kill him. Then the scene shifted where Alto was leaving as they thanked them to keep him overnight as Alto said that he is going back to the palace to report to the king and told him to be careful out there as told him not to forget that Claude lives in Lucas too. Upon leaving, he said that he will contact them later about this schedule for the fight. Then he asked Sylphie to stop and looked at her and said that she has a good man and wishes her the best. As he left, Mine praised, saying that he is sure to be a good brother. Sylphie turned around, saying that he is just a selfish ciscon prince but from inside she thanked her brother. The scene shifted where Sylphie was hiding her identity, and said that it's just like what her brother has said it's better if her relationship with Mine isn't made public and especially when it feels like Claude would start something once the town got lively. Aisha asked should they ask the mayor for help as that might be a good idea as Sylphie said that she has to tell him that she is living there anyway and ask Aisha to let's go see the mayor. Then Sylphie asked Mine if he had told anyone about their marriage. He denied as Sylphie asked him to keep the fact that he is married to the first princess under wraps. Just then the alchemist's wife came there and greeted him good morning as Mine was nervous seeing her. She looked at the princess and screamed out that she and mine were, as just she was about to speak out, they closed their mouths and took her to a corner. The scene shifted where mine had told her everything and told her to keep quiet about him and Sylphie. She replied that it's wonderful considering that he had grown up. She gets close telling him to do his best to steal the princess from that noble man as she will be rooting for him and tells him not to worry as she will not tell anyone even though she got really loose lips. Mine wondered, will that be okay? She left saying good luck to Mine as Sylphie was worried about her but said that she has to head to the mayor, and asked Mine if he wanted to go with them as Mine asked them to let split up as he had to go somewhere. Then they decided to head off as they left as Aisha and Sylphie got to the mayor's Samba office, and informed that Princess Sylphie and Lady Aisha had arrived as he greeted them as Sylphie apologized for interrupting his work and told him that she and Aisha had married into Lucas and they came to announce that they will be residing in that town. He stood up and congratulated her, saying that the town must have a celebration but Sylphie denied saying that she wanted to keep this confidential. The mayor apologized saying that he thought that her partner is the Rosalia family's Lord Claude as Sylphie denied saying Aisha and her are married to the same common boy. 
The mayor was stunned to hear of the boy being a commoner. Sylphie said that he may not know this but there is a boy who lives on the outskirts of town and he became an adult not too long ago and said that his name is mine as the mayor said that he knew him as he mentioned that he is Dian and Yukino's precious child and considers that as happy news. Aisha realized that he knew about mines. Parents as Master Rock who built their bathtub had told them and realized everyone in Lucas knows about mine's parents. The mayor said that it's natural as there are no adults in the city who don't know them and said that he cannot say that in detail but this town was once saved by those and the fact that Lucas exists today is thanks to them, and considering them they are the heroes who saved the country. As the scene shifted, Mine was standing in front of his parents' grave in the office, dad and mother's grave. He apologized to them that he hadn't been able to visit since his coming-of-age ceremony. He bought them some flowers as his mom used to love them. He knelt in front of the grave, telling them that he got married. As he touched the grave, realizing that they both are very warm, neither of them would lose in a beauty contest with mom, and very kind. But he said that he is hiding something from both of them and said that he can steal people's skills. He is careful to tell them as he knows that they would both accept him, and he knows that they wouldn't be afraid of him. But he wishes that they could be there to support him as he wants to talk to them. He heard the voice asking if he is worried about that and told him not to be afraid and told him to work up on his courage and tell them as it's his brain voice as mom and dad would probably say something like that as mine knew that. But he burst out in tears saying that he even so wished that he could talk to them directly as he want to hear their voices and screams out calling them to come back and said that he wished that they had met Aisha and Sylphie as he wanted them to all love together. Just then, Aisha and Sylphie came there saying it's nice to meet your father and mother and introduced to them and said that she is married to his son and she promised to protect mine in their place and told them to rest peacefully. As Aisha was in tears and apologized for greeting them so late, and introduced herself as Aisha, the other wife of mine, and said that she will try her best to not tarnish their name and she will cherish the family they walked so hard to build and ask them to watch over the three of them. Mine was happy to see them and smiled, telling them it was just like he had told them. Mine heard the voice telling them to be strong and said that it would be okay and asked him to go for it. Mine looked back as Aisha asked what's wrong as he denied saying that it was nothing and asked them to let's head back home. As Mine said, he was surprised when they two shut up at the graveyard. Aisha said that they had heard about their parents from the mayor and they thought that they should give their regards and said that they were also surprised to see him there. Then Aisha asked what kind of flowers were those at the grave. Mine told them that those are sunflowers which bloom in his mom's hometown as Sylphie said that she didn't even hear of those before. Mine said that his mom used to grow them in the garden and he wasn't able to grow them himself, so he gave the seed to a florist. Just then an expensive-looking carriage stopped outside the house as they wondered about it. Just then someone kicked the door and stepped out. It was Claude who stepped out, calling Mine a commoner, saying that he was finally back and said that he cannot believe that he makes a royal like him wait, and said if it isn't heard the highness Sylphie and said that he is honored that he accepted his challenge. As Mine said, he didn't remember doing any such things. Claude said that it's spreading around town and the rumor that Mine is fighting a noble with the princess chastity on the line. They realize that it's Alchemist's wife spreading the news. Claude got closer to him, saying their duel has the approval of the king and will take place in the spirit forest and told him not to run away. He called out her highness Sylphide, saying that she's forced to live in a shack like that and said that he will save him from that miserable hut. He told him that family status and skills are proportional and there is no way the skill of a common who lives in a shack like this would match him and told him that he should resent her scum parents from bringing into such a flimsy home. Sylphie told him to watch his mouth. As mine gets in front saying that he can save what he wants to about him but said that he won't forget to insult his mother and father or the house they left behind. As Claude gets mad asking what he thinks he is as being a commoner he asks how dare he define a noble. As Sylphie asked Claude to leave as if he continued in his derision, and he will have the duel called off. As Claude said that they will leave, Claude looked at Mine, saying that he would make him retreat, defying a noble. He left being pissed. The scene shifted to Rosalia's mansion where his butler asked what Claude had done. Claude was mad, telling him to shut up as he said that he won't forgive that plebeian. He said that he knows that Sylphid had loved him back and asked why she won't accept him. Then a person said that he was on the way and called them a trespasser, and asked who had given them the permission to enter when he was away. He said if he discovers someone will find the dragon youngling before he gets the chance to sell it. Then a black shadow appears from behind telling him not to worry as no one will find them. Claude realized that it's the aura racing skill and it was expected of a half-beast. The other person said since he had called them there he assumed that it means he had another plan. Claude grinned, agreeing to him saying that this one is bigger than the dragon. As Close told them that today the entrance into the Forbidden Spirit Forest will be specially granted, and on that day, 
He wants them to use that skill and enter. The person realized that the Forbidden Forest, which Claude confirmed is the home of the divine beast Fenrir, 